What? Because my father, you know, his sense of humor. But my sister said, no, maybe you better wait until the minister's gone. <laughs> sacrificed a lot. He drove to Manhattan every week. Uh, he worked two jobs, a night job, day job. My mom, they, they both of them gave their um, lives to us children. They are parents that are givers. They are, I think they're givers and takers in the world. These two are givers. And they sacrificed a lot for us. So mom was the disciplinarian when I was growing up. <laughs> something that I'm ashamed of that I did as a kid. And, uh, my family taught me into saying this. I can't believe that I'm going to tell you guys this story. We were, we were in my backyard at my house. Um, and I, pardon me, I'm not going to say the word because there are children present, but I, 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 I can't believe that I did. I called my mom something that rhymed with a witch. <laughs> and she was about 35 yards away from me. Okay? The look of the devil went into her eyes. And she started sprinting at me. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And I turned and started running. In a big third story house. She chased me, tossed, made up round, chased me all the way through the house to the top of the stairs, into the attic, underneath the bed, and she picked up a broomstick along the way to send a reminder that I shouldn't be saying those kind of things. And that was, uh, so, so my mom was a good mom. What's that? because they never lost faith in me and they, they let me believe that whereas a lot of people doubted me in the world and, and they never questioned me and they always gave me the belief that um, I could succeed at anything I wanted to. I feel you know, like I can accomplish anything and it's all a testament to these two. Um, you know, my dad, um, <laughs> growing up, I, when I finally got out of high school, <coughs> nobody was sure if I was going to do it. <laughs> I, I don't think I did it. I think they just pushed me out. <laughs> Nonetheless, I didn't know what to do. I hadn't really prepared myself for college, so I decided to go in the service. And uh, my father takes me to the bus station, and he's got tears in his eyes. He said, I'm proud of you, Art. Good luck. I'm going to miss you. Don't call collect. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> I, I, like Susan said, I could, we could go on. I don't want to hog the floor. I'm going to give my sisters a, I, I just, and again, growing up in Walton, New York, as you guys all know, when, over the last 43 this year, but growing up, it was, I, I felt like growing up, that, and this is true, I really did. I felt like I was growing up in the best country in the world, in the best state in the world, 
in the best town in the world, on the best street in the world, in the best unpainted house in the world. <laughs> says uh, a tavola non si invecchia and what it means is that at the uh, at the table 
one does not age. <laughs> and I can't look at you. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> but, um, and what it means is, and, and so, I was working in Italy and, and it was a bunch of other graduate students and we were cooking and it was a great time and there was a saying up above the stove, always. And then every night we would have these great dinners and it was always very jovial and fun and we would be talking. And finally I, I said, what does that mean? After my Italian got a little better, I sort of understood it. And I asked the guy, this old man who's probably in his 80s, what it meant. And he explained to me that, that you know, in Italy, there's the whole tradition of sitting around a table and always being with your family. And, and, I, and he's talked about how when you have that, when you have that, like, and, and every, every night, and Susan was right, you know, like, every night you come home and mom's there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying. <laughs> um, but like every, you know, every morning, you know, and I, I talk to people my age and a lot of their parents, if they're together, you know, they just don't have the memories that we have. And with the family and Thanksgiving, and you just did such a great job. And, and to touch upon what Art said, I feel like I can conquer the world. And that's because no matter what I said I was going to do, whether it was go to Italy or, you know, travel, do something that seemed completely ridiculous, you said whatever you want to do. And, and just one little story about... And I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. She's <I'm>... terrible. <laughs> Just one more thing. But, but the first time I dated a, I mean, I dated a, I, I said, my friends, my parents didn't really embrace. I, I hung up with a different crowd. <laughs> Except for my horseback riding friends, of course. But um, I dated a guy once. Sorry, honey. Um, and, and he had long hair and tattoos. And, and, and I was really worried about him meeting my father really worried. I was like, oh man, he's gonna hate him. He's got a tattoo of a skeleton smoking something like a cigarette, but a little different. <laughs> and so I was like, there's no way this man is gonna relate to my father. And so I'm trying to talk my dad into him saying, you know, he's a little different, you know. And, and my father looked at me and he said, it doesn't matter what I think, it only matters what you think. And, and the whole idea of like that I had the power to make my decisions was always given to us. And I just wanted to thank you for everything. <laughs> Taxes, right? I lived there. <laughs> <laughs> um, my father said to me one time, he's, well, I'm sitting at the table and we're eating dinner, and I would eat and I'd run down the reeds every, every night. And my dad would say, What's the big attraction down there? What's the attraction down there? <laughs> I'd say, Well, you know, we're, we're all real tight friends. Um, Marta's my best friend. She has to babysit, so we go down there and we be with her, except going out and stuff. It had nothing to do with it, the fact that Larry was in the city all week and Sally bowled every night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of stories I know about um, Larry. I wasn't there, but this is all hearsay, so. A couple of things I was thinking about coming up here. And if I win the, um, the lottery, which I, I live in Pennsylvania, so I can play the Powerball, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to win. And, and I'll remember all of you when I do, but um, <laughs> the first thing I'm going to buy after I pay my bills and build a house and get the couch, I'm going to buy a um, 1970 Oldsmobile two-door convertible. <laughs> Jeez, they, they had, Larry had this car, it must have been a mile long, the doors were at least 10 feet long. <laughs> And our, we used to ride around it. We could get three people in the front, three people in a beer ball in the back. <laughs> it was great. It was great. But I heard, because I was never there, but I heard, this might be hearsay, but Larry 
used to drive home from the city with it, and the top didn't work all the time, you know? <laughs> and if it started raining, he'd put an umbrella up. <laughs> so imagine this. Okay, you know, and all the readers just drive like this. One hand on the wheel, one hand over the seat. <laughs> I'm trying to say, wait, Steve, say, how about Margaret? Was she on? <laughs> like this. Uh, he would, imagine Larry driving the car with his knee, holding the umbrella, <laughs> one arm over the seat, right? Up the Palisades Parkway, right? <laughs> he would be just more on the way by. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true? No, no. Okay. No story I remember. Um, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like a Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, and all the ladies, all my friends, my dearest friends, they're all here. We're sitting on a porch. The porch was the best place in the whole world. I mean, we I mean, love that porch. It was the best spot in town. It was in the nicest country, in the nicest town. <laughs> I loved it, you know. And, um, and the girls were all sitting there, and they're all sitting there, how are we going to, you know, what, what, what are we going to do tonight? You know, what, what's going to happen tonight? You know, no, 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 no. You know, actually, they're thinking, how are we going to get drunk tonight? Because we don't have any money, you know. So. And they're sitting there, and all of a sudden, a truck rides, this is a true story, a truck drives by, and a keg feels, falls right off the truck. It goes right on the ground, right in front of the house. Now, imagine the look on the kids, on the, on the, on the girl's face, they're like, you know, remember, um, <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs> so they're sitting there, and they're, we're all, you know, we, we, we all been drinking everything. We're sitting there, and or they're sitting there. I wasn't there. They're sitting there, <laughs> and, uh, and they're sitting there, and they're saying, "Oh God, this is great," you know. And all of a sudden, Sally comes out the door. And they all look like, "Oh no, what are we gonna do?" They look on their faces like, oh, "I don't know." Where. <laughs> and Sally says, "Well, go pick it up." Always had all the taps you needed. <laughs> Tennessee tap, it had the bush tap, the beer ball tap. <laughs> I, I guess the guy came back and found the beer tap, and then they had the party right here back here. <laughs> He's beautiful. Oh, what am I going on? I want to get some more. Yeah, I'm curious. Porch. What story? Porch. Well, that wasn't really a story, though. I mean, yeah, but. <laughs> many times. My beer. No, and then, um. We, we, it, and it was so great. We loved. It was just a great atmosphere at the house, and it was um, like you said, like we said, we'd be sitting there partying in the summer, just you know, not, we were just kind of partying, but just, you know, having a good time, praying or whatever. You know. <laughs> 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 and there, and we, and, uh, we, and he just sat down, played cards with us and stuff. And many times, I um, not many, one time, <laughs> I woke up on the. I must have passed him in my head or something, but I. I um, woke up on the front porch. This bright sunny morning on, um, was it 83 Johnson's after the last? <laughs> and Sally came out and said, okay, Mike. I think she, after she brought me a blanket that night, she came out and said, come on, it's time to go home now. So I got up and go home. And, but that was, that was, that was, uh, that was a regular thing. But, uh, <laughs> the best couch on the porch. It was great. I loved it. But um, what else? Any more stories? Oh, there must there be some last. Give me some. Huh? Yeah. Give me some. Give me some ideas. Yeah. What, what was the idea? Um... Homecoming. The one homecoming we were there. The homecoming that we won in your we hip hip and Iran. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, finally won homecoming. No. <laughs> no, but really, it's just to end. I'll um, just say, I never met anybody with uh, more passion than Mr. Regas, and um, I mean, a passion in every way. I mean, the way he, he um, handles his grandchildren, the way he um, talks to people you know, the way he um, loved my wife when she was like this, this big. And <laughs> Larry said, um, I love women who are pregnant. <laughs> that explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> but obviously the passion 
passion runs through the uh, blood of all the kids, and um, I'm just I'm just proud to know them and to love them and to be a part of. I was a part of the family, but I, I used to sleep there and eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I, owe you, I owe you some money. You're a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, the passion, and, and you know, everybody's he's famous for his passion at the football games. It's the same thing. Once, once I, you know, yeah. Nobody can tell Larry what to say at the football games. <laughs> He says it. You were a referee at one time, so yeah, you know, twelve years. Nobody ever, you know, who can get away with that, you know? Yeah. And, and the passion runs through even at church. You know, he's a, you know, he's the second loudest person singing in the church. And it's great. And my father's the first, of course. You know, you sing, it's, it's, it's the loudest, and your and your passion is great. And um, I'm happy I know you, and I love you guys. And see you later, bye. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Somebody else. I can't. I can't. I wish I did. I did. I'll tell you what, I love everybody. <laughs> I really do. Uh, and and uh, I cry a lot. When I walked in the door, I couldn't stop crying for 15 minutes. I couldn't believe you people came here. This is great. This is great. Thanks a lot. My daughter was telling, you know, when I used to come up the city. She was about four, I guess, one time, and, and uh, I, I came in. I, I came in and sat down, and it had six, I don't know, six, no, maybe two, yeah. Came around, came around the table, you know, we're eating, and, and Bridget is sitting there staring at me, and I, and I kind of like I was going to ask her, what the hell's wrong with her? She was staring at me and staring at me. Finally, she looked at her mommy and she poked her mommy. She said, Kim's home. <laughs> David Kent recently sold his house, their house. And they invited us up. We couldn't go because we, we had to go to Canada that weekend. But Dave said, in his house, in David Kent's house, you can imagine this, Everything was prim and proper. There was no noise. You pass this, pass that, say the blessing, you know. And he said, then I go down and visit the Regis. He said, Bruh! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, way, and that's, that's the way it was in our house, you know. Everybody's yelling at everybody. And we kind of enjoyed life. And I love my family. I love my family very much. And thank you very much for coming. Me?